right, good morning, 10th grade. I hope you guys are doing well today. It is Wednesday, Woo! officially halfway through the week. Uh, I hope you guys have been having a good week so far and things have been going well for you. We are going to pick up with our uh, next section of notes for uh, the Arthropod chapter, chapter 18. Sorry, I'm a little tired this morning. My brain's like struggling to work. I can feel it trying to work. So bear with me as we go through this uh, notes video. Uh, anyway, this section, we're going to talk about arachnids, centipedes, and millipedes. So we're going to gr uh, lump three groups of arthropods together into one section of notes. Uh, and arachnids are what you're supposed to be writing your quiz paper on this week. So hopefully that's something you have at least started or thought about starting. Um, I would highly encourage you to start it if you have not. Um, but we're going to go through them, talk about them a little bit here. Uh, mainly look at their body structure and some of their behaviors. So arachnids, this includes spiders, daddy long legs, mites, ticks, and scorpions. So a lot of times when we say the word arachnid, people automatically think just spider, but the arachnid family is a little bit larger than that. Uh, they can be found anywhere in the world. They are uh, they are not restricted to one continent or not found on one continent. Um, like most mammals, you can find on every other continent but Antarctica. Uh, but you can find mice on Antarctica plus every other continent. With arachnids, you can find them everywhere. They are on every continent in every climate. They can survive anywhere and just about anything. So we're gonna look at spiders first uh, because spiders are the classic arachnid, okay? So that's what we're gonna deal with first is arachnids and we're gonna be looking specifically at spiders. That's the majority of this section of notes is going to be on spiders, all right? So, two flat, cla ugh, sorry guys. <laughs> two classifications of spiders. You have true spiders, and you have miglomorphs or tarantulas, okay? Tarantulas are not considered a true spider. They actually fall into the miglomorph category. We're not gonna talk about them too much in depth, but if you chose to do the tarantula for your uh, arachnid project, then hopefully you have learned some pretty cool stuff about them and their miglomorphousness. Uh, I just like saying miglomorph. I think it's a fun word personally. Um, and you guys know me, I like fun words. So, uh, some characteristics of spiders in general. Um, they have two distinct body regions, the cephalothorax and the abdomen. Now on a spider, the head and the thorax have been fused to get the, I'm not sorry. Yes, not, not the head, all right? Yes, the head. I'm struggling today, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I haven't had much sleep, so just bear with me. It's no different than when you guys are in class normally, so let's not pretend like it is. Uh, anyway, the cephalothorax and the abdomen. The cephalothorax is interesting because it is that fused head and thorax region, okay? Uh, they have four pairs of legs, so eight legs in total because four times two is eight. Uh, they have simple eyes, and uh, all are carnivorous, and most are venomous, okay? There are very few that are not venomous. Most of the time, we don't even notice the venom because it's not strong enough to affect us, but it is powerful enough to affect whatever they're eating. Okay, so the outside structure. So we're going to look at first the outside structure of a spider. Uh, they have a protective exoskeleton, which that's what we're talking about. Invertebrates means that they don't have that in uh, internal skeleton. They have an exoskeleton. Uh, so some basics here. They have a pedicel, which is the thin waist that separates the cephalothorax from the abdomen. Okay, remember that cephalothorax is that fused head and thorax region. And then if you study a spider or see a spider up close, you can see it best on a tarantula, actually. Um, you'll notice there's like a re, it kind of tapers in to a point 
and then it bulges out into the abdomen, okay? Well, that point where it tapers in before it starts that bulge into the abdomen, that is the pedicel. Uh, most have eight simple eyes arranged in two rows of four each, and then they have the chislare or the kislare, okay? These are short appendages below the eyes that are used to seize and kill prey. So these are basically the little claws that we see next to their mouths, okay? Um, if you look at a spider, you'll notice they have these uh, almost like sharp pincers. And these sharp pincers are located next to the mouth because that helps them seize the prey and keep it in place while they suck the blood out of it, which we'll talk about when we talk about how they eat. Well, actually we'll talk about it on this slide. All right, the mouth is designed to suck liquids. It cannot chew. Um, and it has a pedipalp, which is an appendage that looks like a small leg on either side of the mouth that helps cut food so they can suck it up. So what happens, well, we're gonna talk about it on another slide. So I don't wanna run, in, I don't wanna run ahead of myself, but it's kind of cool how they eat. Um, blood pressure is what allows them to keep their legs extended, okay? Uh, this is why if you, um, if you squish the body of the bug or even uh, the body of a spider or poke a hole in the body of the spider and cause it to bleed, the lack of blood pressure to the legs will actually cause those legs to shrivel up, okay? They'll fold up under the body of the spider because the blood pressure that flows through them is what helps keep them extended. All right, and then the hairs are located at the end of their legs helps them cling to things, okay? Their hairs are almost like mini hands for them. The internal structure, the nervous system. Uh, they have an acute sense of touch due to the hairs that's located all over the body that contain nerve endings, okay? Each hair has several nerve endings in it, so it makes them acutely aware of their surroundings and what they are touching. Their digestive system, uh, their stomach is a sucking organ that helps pull food from the mouth to the intestines where it becomes absorbed. So what happens is they kill their prey, right? They release this enzy enzyme that starts to break it down and then they start to suck the food into their mouth and their stomach actually like turns into a vacuum almost and it just <laughs> sucks the food down into itself. Circulatory system, the blood is a pale blue color because of its white blood cell content. It has a uh, lower white blood cell content, so hence a different color. Uh, the blood doesn't flow through closed blood vessels, but through open passages. This is also another reason why um, if you are to squish it, that the legs are going to curl up underneath of it because it's not, the blood is not enclosed in blood vessels, okay? Um, it's blood vessels are why if you are cut, you don't bleed out all over the place, okay? Well, if you have a little cut, you don't bleed out all over the place, all right? Um, but a spider, if they have a little cut, their blood's just flowing freely all around. So what can happen is that free flow of blood will uh, be affected and it'll free flow out of the cut and that causes the legs to lose that blood pressure, which causes them to curl up. The respiratory system, uh, their lungs are pretty interesting because they have book lungs. Their lungs actually look like a flat-faced book, okay? A book that's laid open. Um, and each uh, page of the book helps exchange the oxygen throughout their body. But these book lungs exchange gases and allow oxygen to flow throughout the body. Um, again, the fact that there's no closed blood vessels, this breathing system really allows them to transport oxygen to all of the blood in the system, which helps keep everything, all their organs, functioning the way they need to function because organs need oxygen. And then they have spinnerets. These are what they use to spin their silk. Uh, the reproductive system, we're going to just kind of uh, glance over this. 
But the males use the pedipalps to place their sperm in the female's seminal receptacle. Now, the seminal receptacle, if you remember, we've talked about this before with uh, other arthropods, but the seminal receptacle is where the uh, sperm basically goes to wait until the female is ready to lay her eggs. So sometimes the female will eat the male after this occurs. Um, black widows are famous for this. They will eat their husband after he has uh, helped her have babies. Uh, the female stores the sperm until she is ready to lay her eggs and then fertilizes them as they are laid. So as her eggs are laid, they pass by that seminal receptacle, they pick up the sperm and become fertilized. Uh, the female keeps the eggs safe in a silk cocoon or an egg sac. This is why it's very important if you ever see a, uh, it kind of looks like a cotton ball for most spiders. If you ever see like a cotton ball stuck in the corner somewhere or maybe uh, growing under a plant or something like that, it's probably not the best idea to cut that open or squish it because then you're going to be covered in hundreds to thousands of baby spiders, okay? Uh, the spiderlings will hatch in the egg sac, hence why it's a bad idea to squish it or cut it open because once they hatch inside there, they're just waiting until it's time for them to come out. Um, but they stay there until warm weather comes. Uh, and then what they do once they come out of that egg sac is they release these drag lines. And drag lines are how they fly away to different regions. So it's a fine thread of silk that spiralings spin and allows them to catch the wind and travel miles away from their place of birth. This is how spiders get all over the world very, very quickly. Uh, most species of spiders will only live for one year, so typically what happens is they mature fairly quickly, um, and then the uh, male and female, they'll mate. Most of the time the male will die then because the female will eat him. Um, but then the female, once she lays her egg sac, um, lays her eggs and spins her egg sac, typically she will crawl off away from that egg sac and die. Some other arachnids, all right. You have the harvest men or your daddy long legs. I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, daddy long legs, um, it's gonna sound kind of mean. Well, it is mean. Uh, but my brothers and I used to catch them and like pluck their legs off and just like leave them with maybe two or three legs and start, watch them still try to work and walk with two or three legs. I know, it's terrible. But they were, in our eyes, because we didn't know any better at that point in time, they were spiders that wouldn't bite us. But uh, they're actually not a spider. So, um, they are similar to spiders, but there are several key differences. One, they have no waist. If you ever look at a daddy long leg, all their whole body is just rounded, okay? It kind of looks, um, some of them anyway, kind of look like a brown fuzzball almost. Uh, they have only one pair of simple eyes, not eight. They lack spinnerets, so they cannot spin webs. And most are omnivorous, meaning that they can eat vegetation or they can trap prey and eat it. And then we have scorpions. These are stinging arachnids. Uh, the abdomen is tipped with a venomous stinger. Often their sting is not fatal to man, but there are some out there that are very, very powerful and can cause serious damage if you don't get it taken care of soon. Either way, if you get stung by a scorpion, you should go get checked out immediately. Um, females may devour the males after mating. That's common with arachnids, guys. That's common with um, insects. That's common with a lot of things, actually. <laughs> um, but they will devour the male after they have mated. Uh, they are ovoviparous or viviparous, meaning they can either give birth to live young or they can lay eggs and they're um, in their bodies and then those eggs hatch in their bodies and they can be born live. That's what ovoviparous means. And then we have mites and ticks. These are blood-sucking arachnids. Um, ticks can transmit diseases to man and animal. Uh, the most famous disease that they transmit is Lyme disease. Uh, that's why it's important. Um, Honestly, I don't know that it's as much of a problem here in Florida. Maybe it is, and I've just never personally experienced it. 
Um, but up north where I grew up in Ohio and Kentucky, ticks are a big problem. And if you go spend any time in the woods up there, it's very important that you thoroughly check yourself for ticks. Um, uh, check your hair, behind your ears. They like warm spots on the body. So if you go spend a significant amount of time in the woods, always check yourself for ticks because they can burrow into you and they can suck your blood um, and they can transmit Lyme disease to you if they happen to be a carrier of it. So it's always important if you go walking in the woods to check yourself for ticks. Um, and then we're going to look at centipedes and millipedes to wrap this section up. So arthropods with many legs. We have centipedes. Uh, these have a flattened body with long antenna. They are poisonous to insects and small animals, which a lot of people don't realize that they are poisonous. But their poison is painful to humans, but it's usually not harmful. If you do happen to get bitten by a centipede, I never have been, but I hear that it is not pleasant. Uh, and they have only one pair of legs per body segment. Then you have millipedes, which have a round body. They are not poisonous, and they have two pairs of legs per body segment. Um, the fact of their body shape and the amount of legs is the main difference between them and a centipede. Also, millipedes um, tend to have, well, they do have more legs uh, than a centipede does. Centipedes can have up to about uh, 350 legs, maybe 400 legs on their body versus millipedes, they can have up to about 750 to 800 legs on their body, which is really gross when you think about it. But anyway, all right, well, that's where we're gonna stop for today. That is all of the arachnid, centipede, and millipede section. Uh, the next video that we do, we'll wrap up this chapter and we'll talk about crustaceans, which are aquatic arthropods. But I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm praying for you, I miss you and uh, hopefully I will get to see you guys soon.